The latest episode of The Ugly Truth is brought to you by lipandclip.com. It's time for self-care, everybody. Super affordable from masks to cleaning products to cosmetics, a lot of skincare products that we all use every day. Check it out, lipandclip.com. Thanks for supporting The Uggs. Enjoy the show. Welcome to The Ugly Truth. This is episode 501. Levi's 501 jeans. Ugh, ugh. Can you buy those still, I wonder? Interestingly, yes. Uh, this was about, well, let's see. How long have the jeans been sitting in my laundry room? Probably a year. I used to wear 501s forever, but you know, yeah, I think they stopped fitting the way they used to. Maybe they didn't. Maybe your body changed, but That's here's true. the thing. I used to wear them all the time because when we were kids, our parents bought our 501 jeans at the, um, what was that, Army Navy store? Did <laughs> they, they used really? to sell them? Yeah, they used to sell 501 jeans, the non, non-pre-washed non raw 501 <laughs> jeans where you <laughs> bought them in your size. We had to wash them because when you put them on, it was like wearing like a, a stiff baseball glove. <laughs> non-oiled <laughs> well here's the thing with the original levi's 501 jeans first of all i do have a pair of unwashed 501 jeans in my house for daryl and i'll explain that in a minute but our parents purchased because you know only once did i get a pair of jordash jeans when i was in sixth grade outside of that it was not name brand central in our house but it's levi's funny because levi's are more expensive now than any other now jean. But back in the day, they were not. They oh were like God. Wranglers. Do you remember those those uh, bins on the side of the street? We'll buy your used 501s or your, we'll buy your used Levi's. Yeah, they sold them to Japan and made a shit ton of money off of them because Jap- Japanese love Levi. They love anything American. Back then, it was all about American brand. But we would go to the Army Navy store in Orangevale and our parents would buy us like five pairs of Levi's 501 jeans unwashed. And you have to, and you have to wash and dry them seven times oh my god and then then they become the actual size because when you buy them they look like big blue dark blue black paper pants <laughs> but then when you wash them they turn into the bright that 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 denim blue and they're shrink to they shrink to the size they're supposed to be after seven washes and dries. I, so only we, our mother would know something like that. Miss Susie right? Homemaker sewed everything yes. growing up. Oh, in a future episode, I have been, and maybe you can think of some that I, and let's not talk about it now, but in a future episode, I have been compiling a list of all of the unusual hobbies that our mother tried oh, to get God. us into. There are so many. And so I'm like, I literally have a, a running list going. So we're going to talk about it because I didn't realize until when I started thinking about it, I'm like, Jesus, we had a lot of unusual well, hobbies that we went through. Or our mom did. And then she would pass them on to us because she'd lose interest. Okay. I so, don't really have any because okay. she was not domesticated. After. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She was not that way by the time I was older because she was divorced. She was, you know, working and she was all um, like, you know, you- silk business suits, high, high heels and, you know. Yeah, full into her knots landing phase. But exactly. uh, she was a boss babe back then. And so anyway, Daryl and I were headed up to Placerville. And Old Town Placerville is f- full of super retro vintage stores that have been around for like 100 years. Yeah. And so there was this one old hardware store. Oh, I that love that sold- hardware store. Yeah, they sell, they sell clothes. And these clothes are meant for like working folk. Yeah. And so... We walked in and it's still run by the family that it, mm-hmm. it's like seven generations later, these old ass grandmas are behind the register. Well, I mean, you don't want to like, get rid of that parcel or whatever that, you know, right. That's the prime, that's prime property right there. Yeah. Right. So the it, seven generations later, the grandmas are still running the registers. Mm-hmm. And so we walk in going, oh, I, and I love stores like that, too. I love like those Western feed and supply stores where they sell literally everything. I like the old pharmacy slash soda shop places. I think those are they sell like the coolest stuff like tooth powder and you know things like that we used to have one in orangevale um called i think it was the capri market or something i was just like gonna that? say wasn't it in the capri shopping li- or shopping lot the, shopping, the capri center. shopping center which is now a giant walmart but old pharmacy with wooden floors mm-hmm. and then you walk in and then to the left was a soda fountain mm-hmm. shop and you could sit along the bar with the formica and get a malted milk or malted shake or whatever you wanted soda what are those things called uh, i don't know 
yeah like the like phosphate a root beer float or something yeah or you something. could get anything super old school and um now then and that's where you bought your condoms your birth control and your sodas <laughs> <laughs> exactly and then it closed and turned into a giant oak furniture store i remember god those places are like <laughs> They were every everywhere. week going out of business. Like you've been going I, out of business I know, right? since you opened. <laughs> we're just transferring this stuff to the to the location in Rancho Cordova. Well, but... what's funny is is like usually those going out of business sales. If you look, it's just like going out of business in San Jose. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> right. <laughs> so right. Someone's going out of business, just not you. It's true. And per, and by the way, everyone, including us, owned their oak dining table mm-hmm. and chairs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we all had them. Everyone had some form of it. Yeah. Or their right? you know giant uh, furniture bedroom set that you know. You could Ugh. could hardly fit bodies in there after it's all 700 set up. pounds of oak. Oh, God. <laughs> They're so and then heavy. everyone was trying to sell it at their garage sale. And it's just like, we're and all no selling the same it. shit. Nobody wants it. <laughs> A waterbed. <laughs> Maybe those people who want our jeans will buy this stuff. I don't know. Nobody you wants a waterbed. How much is this glass face? Five cents. I'll take it. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> anyway, so we were in this old hardware store in, in Placerville and they were selling the original Levi's 501 jeans, the, the non pre-washed stuff. And mm-hmm. they feel, they, t- they feel terrible. They look ugly, but I told Daryl, he had you, never seen it before. You pick and it I up go, and you're oh. just like, I need some lotion. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, it's hurting my hands. So <laughs> I said, Daryl, these are the OG 501s, like the real deal. And he's like, Oh, I've never seen those. I'm like, let's get you a pair. I don't buy them anymore because my ass is too big. Mm-hmm. They don't fit right. But I used to wear them all the time when I was a kid, and they are the most comfortable jeans when you wear them in. They're so Mm -hmm. nice. So I do have a pair of Levi's that I own, and they do fit, but it's either they're going to be too small or too big in the waist. And so I'm like, fuck it, I'm not wearing them anymore. Mm -hmm. But bought him a pair. He was super excited. The ladies were just like, oh, you two are so cute. You know, we've been here for a hundred years. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all just ring us up. (laughs) I dude and then we get home and a month later they decided to close the business for good oh no <laughs> literally they did they were like we're done you know we're everyone's getting old and nobody no none of the youngsters want to take it over so we're just going to close and i was like oh man i mean we could have gotten these jeans for like 20 bucks you guys should have bought the paid like 60 dollars for these so. Yeah, really. Well, I mean, well, yeah. see, I think they're probably good for people who have like no shape. And that's probably why I wore them yes. when I was young, because yes, they, I remember the five buttons, which I loved because it just mm-hmm. like you unsnap yourself or unbutton yourself. And I like it when a guy wears them and does that. <laughs> it looks really good on a dude. Yeah, but that just means he has no body. <laughs> well, no, they have. I, I don't know. Because if they have a little like a real flat stomach and they pull and they just Oh, yeah, I know, good. but they also have to have like no ass. So I mean, they just they have oh. to literally have like no nothing because you're right. You, they're mm-hmm. they're pretty much straight, and I think that's why they were so inexpensive because there's literally no <laughs> curvature there's anywhere. It's just like it. you pretty much slip them on toothpicks and then button like them. You, you, if you fit, you fit. If you don't, basically, you don't wear these. You wear Wranglers. Basically. But they did conform <laughs> to your body eventually. But I mean, yeah, like it takes a long time. I mean, they would fit perfectly on your body, but I mean that's with a body that just doesn't change and so I think that's why they worked for me as a teenager because I pretty much weighed 100 pounds for I don't know a good 15 years and so Mm -hmm. so I loved those but then eventually they stopped you know not fitting and so I was just like well yeah they change well they 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 make them somewhere they made them somewhere else instead no I I had a baby and that's what happened that'll do (laughs) it yeah and now my jeans I have to get the ones that have you know in the title butt lift and so (laughs) It's just, in fact, that's what I do when I'm in the jeans sections at the top. It says jeans, you know, the drop down box is jeans. And then I just write butt lift and then search mm-hmm. and that's then the anything else that comes it. up. And I'm just like, OK, hmm. oh, wax jeans. That's my, that's my, that's my brand. <laughs> so like, perfect. Well, I remember when they started changing jeans for women and all of a sudden it was like 30 percent spandex. You know, suddenly every pair of jeans, it's almost impossible not to find a pair of jeans with zero spandex in it. Anything that's got like a a polyester blend with stretch and it says butt lift. I'm like, oh, that's those are mine. (laughs) (laughs) Shit, I'm I'm close to getting those padded underwear that, you know, you put on and they have like the little butt pads in there. But Paula, Victor says that's false advertising. Well. I wouldn't yeah. do that. I wouldn't do you that. But have to. you seen those underwear that you put on? Yes. And they just have like ass cutouts. I would have loved those for when we were young and getting spankings all the time. That would have been nice. <laughs> 
having just little hair. pads. Focus on these. Focus on the <laughs> upper ass cheek. That's they, fine. Go right ahead. They look like boobs for your butt. I don't know. I know. Like that could be confusing. Yeah. Honestly, I, you're that's one step away from getting the butt implants. Really. It's like a rev, it's it's not a reverse thong, but it's it's kind of <laughs> the same idea. I I really I'm not sure what you would call those. I don't know. I get it. I mean, those would be good for like a night out where you're not planning on getting laid, and so you're just sure. like, I'll, I'll just take the attention, but yeah. no one's no one's really gonna know what's going on underneath here. That's like you know where. I don't wear them, but other girls would wear like their padded bras, their spanks, mm-hmm. their, you know, butt cheek, assless underwear. Look, you know. if, pe- if people could see what's going on under a girl's club dress, they would be oh my very God. surprised. It's like a construction. <laughs> I, I, you know what? Oh, yeah. Ever since I've seen some of the things Kim Kardashian does to her body. Oh, God. It's I was just real. like, that's that's inappropriate. That is, <laughs> that is, that's, I mean, that's, that's beyond false advertising. I'm like, you're using like. Things from Home Depot. That's, I know. That's not even clothing. I when I saw time, her taped up, like with duct yeah. tape, yes. I was just like, whoa. I'm like, you've jumped into a whole new realm there, girl. I'm, well, I, I would have never even thought about that. If you get photographed as much as someone like she does, whether it's self photography or paparazzi or whatever, why is there a rule? You might as well use any and every invention on the planet to make yourself look flawless. I'm not opposed to it. If I was like Beyonce or something, I'd be like, put that shit on me. I don't want anybody saying that I have a role. No. I mean, because they judge you. They judge you. Now, they don't judge me or you. See, if I was to miss, I'd be like, judge away. This is reality. Yeah, but folks. you're different. And then after that, I would be like, then there's no there's no need to be perfect because it's just like, you know, I'm right. flabby and you yeah. know, I don't give a fuck. So there. <laughs> mystery. Mystery solved. <laughs> Yes. And that way, I if agree. I have a really good night, they're just like, well, you look fantastic tonight. Well, I am wearing Spanx. So, yeah. yeah. You know what? More <laughs> more of us should be famous, honestly, because then we could be like, yes, well, I mean, this is the reality. I, I know that we want to paint the faux Hollywood glam, but this is pretty glam for me. I don't know. Anyway, speaking of weight, this has been quite a week for the minor household. Oh, wait, quickly. Speaking of weight. I know a lot of people are gaining weight during this quarantine thing. I've gained four pounds. I'm not happy about it. I've gained two (laughs) and I'm not happy about it. Like I stepped on the scale and it tipped to like another decade. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I'm like, this is wrong. (laughs) This is just wrong. And I did it again. And I'm just like, what the fuck? And so then I thought I was doing better because I don't look any different to me. I don't look any different. But then I stepped on the scale again just today because I'm like, I feel slimmer. I've been eating like less, you know, operation starvation. And I stepped on the scale again. I'm like, you motherfucker (laughs) betraying me. Even Sebastian Maniscalco said that when he was doing the things my wife buys on Amazon video. Mm -hmm. He says, I, I've gained eight pounds, he says, but, you know, I, I hit the gym and he says the last two weeks I've lost eight to ten. And I'm like, you fuck you. Fucker. I'm like, you know, you probably, you. Took a, you probably took a dump and walked on the treadmill one day. I was going to say he quit drinking beer for a weekend, took a shit and went, oh, there it is. There's my there's my eight pounds. I hate men for that. It's so annoying. We cling to that shit. I drink water and, and eat like rice checks and I gained <laughs> five pounds. It's the worst. Anyway, so Monday. Our older husky bodega was getting a teeth cleaning. And as you know, if you have a dog, they have to sedate them. (laughs) Yeah. How many teeth did they pull? Well, dropped them off at 745 in the morning. At two o'clock, we get a phone call because our power kept going out. And the vet called because the vet is literally a block away from where we live. Oh, so they're on the same grid. So they called and said, hey, we were just preparing bodega for his tooth cleaning because they didn't expect there to be any extractions or anything like that. It was just going to be a deep clean. And the power keeps going out. He is in pre-sedation, which means he has a catheter. He's been given the, like, the Ativan of doggy drugs. Yeah. And he's got his little breathing tube secured to his mouth, but he's not completely asleep yet. But if the power doesn't go on, then we can't do the procedure. We're like, okay. Oh, yeah, because they can't keep the... Uh... Right. They said, we'll call you in 10 or 15 minutes and we'll make the call. And I said, all right. So they call me back in five minutes because our power went back on. Yeah. And I was like, excellent. He goes, we're going to give it a minute. And so we were sitting there talking. He goes, so we're going to... We just were calling to get the approval that we can go ahead and begin with Bodega. And we said, yes, go ahead. And then all of a sudden in the background, I hear this... Ah! like a bunch of voices i go oh you guys having a party he goes no the power just went out again oh and i went oh no and he and i he goes you know what give me five minutes so he calls me back and he said we've decided we're not doing any surgeries today yeah i, uh, I don't blame them yeah they're like risky. it's 
it's so dangerous. We can't, once we're in, we can't stop. And there's no such thing as manual and with no light. So we're just going to call it, but no charge for today. Bring it back on the following Monday and we'll do it then. And I said, all right, cool. So, uh, you can come and get him. <laughs> he's yeah, very, druggy, very but heavy, sleepy but he's puppy fine. on your hands. <laughs> and I said, can he walk? And they said, yes. And I said, okay, cool. So, we, we go and we immediately run over and get him. They bring him out and he definitely looks drunk. He's walking <laughs> kind of like, hoo, 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 you know, so he gets in the car and he's whining. He's like, hoo, 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 and he's doing this. And we're like, oh, Bodega. And he starts to howl. And we're like, it's all right. And they said he's not in any pain at all. We did nothing to him. But the drugs cause confusion. Like delirium. Yeah. Yes. And it's called dysphoria. And so they said normally he would be here doing it. And we're used to it. We know how to deal with it, uh, which is nothing. We just were used to dogs behaving this way. He got very vocal when we took him off the oxygen. So we know (laughs) he's going to have a time. And they said, give it a few hours. So we get him home at like 2.30 and it's 6.30 and he's still crying. He has no idea where he's at. He won't eat. He he can't do anything. And I'm like, okay. So I called and I said, hey, my dog is still like crying and Mm -hmm. and they're like, you know, if it's really of a concern, we can give him a reverse drug and it'll help a little bit. Well, why but, don't they just do that? Um, I don't think they're big fans of pumping animals full of drugs unless absolutely necessary. Well, and it's I absolutely it. necessary because I don't want to sit here anymore <laughs> with him doing this. And so, well, I decided to wait it out. They said he shouldn't start improving in like an hour or so. And I said, all right. So he did improve. But for the most part, he cried almost all night. Yeah. See, I wouldn't have dealt with that. And he wouldn't eat. And he hadn't eaten in over 24 hours. And so finally he started eating wet food. He he was just a mess. And so um, <laughs> it was just a nightmare. And so he started crying at like 4 a.m. on Tuesday, which sucked. And then I scheduled a teeth cleaning on Tuesday. So I go to the dentist and it's a deep clean. And so I was there for like an hour. I had to get like seven shots. Yeah, but that's like your weird sexual bondage fantasy pleasure to get, you know, the giant shot from your dentist. (laughs) I didn't get him. It was my (gasps) hygienist. (laughs) Damn. So it wasn't even the good one. But she, you know, what was really funny is um, she's like, okay, you're due for an exam anyway. And I said, okay. And she goes, you should, you sh-, she goes, Dr. React really keeps a close eye on your file. So you definitely need to like, you're like, I call. bet he does. And I said, <laughs> I said, excuse me, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, um, all right, well, I'll call. <laughs> I'll make an appointment. Like, do, and you so, have, do you have his cell phone number by any chance? I'm like, I can just give him a buzz. I'll just send and him so- a selfie of my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> with my mouth wide open maybe he'll want that i don't know with like a little and cleavage you're like uh. <laughs> she said he asked that you wear that purple sweater no <laughs> just kidding. so anyway so i leave there and you then... have a bib on with nothing else <laughs> uh. it's like this is what you want to see right wet hair so i don't know why the wet hair but you know the next day daryl and i had our annual physicals which of course i had an awkward moment why do you guys um, do all that stuff in the same week? It all just lined up. It wasn't even on purpose. It just happened. Don't you have and a calendar? So, yes, but it just, it was, it, first of all, what happened is everything got pushed because of the pandemic. And this is, this clearly is the week where they go, okay, it's, it's open territory. We're doing it all. And so we did that. But all this time, even during the physicals, Daryl is preparing for his colonoscopy, which happened yesterday. <laughs> <sighs> And that I requires wish I had known that. <laughs> that requires uh, you you have a you kind of eat differently for the first couple of days, and then you do the liquid diet, mm-hmm. and then obviously did he, he get movie prep or what did he get? He got soup prep. Okay, and I don't know why they called mine movie prep. I'm like, is it because you're supposed to sit there and watch a movie? Because I'm like, I, you know, yeah. well, go ahead. Mine wasn't. Mine really wasn't that bad. But go ahead. It wasn't. And so I said, look, I've read everything very carefully. We have to eat low fiber, no fiber foods, which sucks because it's all high carb and stuff. But whatever. It's only for a couple of days. And then you start the soup prep uh, at six o'clock the night before. And then you unfortunately you have to wake up at 245 in the morning and do it again. But it's not like it used to be. And so he and Paula, this was the hardest part. He was so self-conscious of this cleansing process that. Uh, first of all, I, <laughs> in support of him, I went on the liquid diet too, because I'm like, who cares? Cause I'm not going to, you like, got one yourself. No, no, no. I didn't do the cleanse. Oh, okay. I just did the liquid diet, which means for 24 hours, I only had liquids for 
for sustenance. Well, you're and not was, supposed to eat anything. Well, the day before, you, the, the day leading into your cleanse, you have only liquids. And that includes broth, water, any anything you can see through, no red anything. And then at six o'clock that day, you start the cleanse. Okay. And so we did the liquid diet and I said, no, I'm going to do this in support of you. Plus there's nothing wrong with a little, you know, fast every once in a while. Maybe I would have set him up with the Xbox in the bedroom and be like, if you need something, you know, text me. So he's like, he was really self-conscious and he's like, look, I- I'm just going to like hunker down in the bedroom. And That's I'll what just, I would have yeah. said. Put on some sweatpants, no panties. Yep. And then, you know, I'll just take over and that'll be that. And I said, listen, I don't mind you being up in our room, but the deal is, is that I like being in my room by myself. You don't have anything to do. No computer, no Xbox, no All right, nothing. then you go in the room and he stay downstairs in the sweatpants with no panties. And then, you know. I said, I will go upstairs when it's time and you can have the whole downstairs to yourself. And he's like, but I don't want to. Inc-. I'm like, shut up already. This is how we're doing it. You guys both need to get off the teat every once in a while. Six o'clock. Well, it wasn't that he didn't want to be away from me. He was self-conscious of the whole process and didn't want anyone around to hear it. And so I'm like, it's fine because he had no Ooh. idea what to expect that's why okay so when i did mine well fortunately mm-hmm. i was alone um yeah. because i was single at the time and so right. but i still i get embarrassed by myself i drank the stuff and i stayed like in the bathroom area for like i think an hour just to kind of mm-hmm. like wait and see because you know when mom explained hers she made it sound like she was like peeing out of her butt for 24 hours straight it's i'm starting like to that think that mom and allison <laughs> are like drama queens when it comes oh, yeah. to medical stuff I'm not right? saying you and Stephanie are a lot better, but, hey. you know, <laughs> hey. you guys aren't. You just. What do you mean? You guys make it sound like when you get things. <laughs> like how many face. mammograms have you had? Oh, Jamie, how many children have you had? And you make it sound like you were having like a semi truck pulled out of your vagina. Have you seen my births? I'm not lying. Have you seen mine? <laughs> yeah, you were easy. What did we say? M- Olivia came out like a wet fart. Okay, but my eight pound son, I mean, that was no that was no thing. But I mean, I wasn't freaking the F out. I mean, okay, just... first of all, stop minimizing everyone's drama. It is I'm it is just difficult. saying that I've been through tough stuff too, and it Agreed. wasn't horrible. Well, in, I, in, hey, in... I got skewered the same day. They didn't they put the thing down my throat and they stuck the thing up my butt. They practically touched. I mean, I'm just I'm saying. Aware. Yeah, you were a <laughs> Artisserie chicken. I get it. Anyway. But I'm just saying, so I stood in the bathroom for like I think a half an hour or whatever, mm-hmm. just to see, like, you know, okay, so is this thing an all of a sudden like you know <laughs> like a scud missile go through my body and like yes. just pop out? But I mean, like, after the first like one or two, mm-hmm. everything was like that was about it. And yes. so every time I drank it, like it just came right out the other end within like, you know, five minutes, and then that was mm-hmm. it. And so it just kind of started flushing. Like every time I drank it, it just came out. And then that was the end of it. Mom made it sound like every time she drank it, she like went for like three hours. I'm like, what the fuck's in your intestines, mom? (laughs) Jeez. Well, that's the thing is now they give you instructions. They're like, look, to make this process easy, eat this way for like two or three days, then the liquid diet, then the cleanse, and you'll you'll be golden. So we did that. So the problem with this is that. Daryl has never been sedated. He's never had anything even remotely close to this type of procedure before. So he, because of the fear of the unknown, he had no idea what to expect from beginning to end. He was a grumpy asshole this whole week. And he had this look of terror on his face all the time. And I go, are you all right? He goes, yeah, I'm fine. Why? I go, you look like shit. He's like, I'm fine. And I'm like, okay. And so the, the cleanse begins and I'm starving because I haven't eaten since like Wednesday night and or Tuesday night. And I've also I had told dental him I had work. to run an errand and gotten a fucking Big Mac with cheese. I wasn't hungry, though. And you know what, Paula? I felt bad. I, I ate some wheat thins and I felt like I was cheating. So I was just like, well, that no. was your dumb idea. I'd be like, I know. Oh, if you need anything, I'm upstairs. I don't have freaking DoorDash or something. <laughs> I know. Malia goes, Mom, I can buy us Chipotle and have it delivered and I can just take it upstairs. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would have done. I mean, yeah. I don't know why I was just you doing insisted it. on suffering. I was doing it in support of his cause. And so he got really cranky. And so he takes the he takes the stuff 
And he's wait he you know because he's never done before he's thinking it's going to be like a switch and he's just going to have to like bolt to the bathroom which it's not mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. especially if you do everything right and you don't eat like a pig and so <laughs> well yeah just don't have fucking Thanksgiving before you right. do it yeah please don't and so he starts kind of pacing around and goes everything all right he goes I'm gonna go upstairs I'm like okay and so Malia and I are standing in the kitchen and I just I sighed heavily and he goes what he goes I told you and I said. Listen, I will go upstairs. We will go upstairs. I don't want you to be stuck up there for three hours. And so it's like, why are you changing the plan all of a sudden? I didn't want it to be stink central while I was up there. <laughs> right. Either do it down here or do it up there. Make a choice. So he's, he's <laughs> I eating. get mad. Well, I did get mad. I go, you know what? I go, I've been starving myself in support of your cause. That's it. And I grab the, the crackers and I start shoveling them in my mouth. And Malia starts laughing and she excuses herself and goes upstairs with her burrito. I said, I'm going upstairs. So I go upstairs. Two hours later. Hey, how are you? It's not that bad. I don't know what was going on with me. I'm like, well, we're starving and angry. Continue with your shitting. I will just, you know, let me know when everything's okay, you know. So Mm -hmm. ultimately it was fine. The hardest part was getting up in the middle of the night and doing the whole thing. He goes, yeah, that was a really hard one to drink because you're so tired. I don't know why they, I had to wake up at 5 a.m. for my Mm -hmm. one. I didn't have to wake up in the middle of the night. Yeah, his procedure, I mean, he had to be at the place at like 745 and yeah, me. I had to be there, I think, at 8, but I don't yeah. know. My last one was 5 a.m., so I'm not sure what the 2 a.m. one or 3 Yeah, they didn't, was. they didn't want um, – he wasn't supposed to have any any kind of liquids or any kind of things four hours leading into his thing. So anyway, it was fine. He got through it. He was the most nervous about the IV. He'd never had an IV before. Well, he hates needles. And he hates them anyway. He goes, the hardest part was when they put the IV and he goes, I'm I'm used to getting my blood drawn, but I looked down and saw the needle was like not, it was still in my body and it freaked him out. And well, so the, the nurse, IV needles are bigger because they have to put a tube in there. Sure. <laughs> and so the nurse was like, he was getting clammy and white and I couldn't go in because of COVID. Yeah. So I was gone. I went to Target. And so he was like, he's like, yeah, I'm getting kind of nervous. And the nurse goes, oh, it happens all the time. And she gave him a bunch of electrolytes. Because yeah. he's kind of dehydrated. Went through the whole process. Everything's great. He comes out. Druggy as hell. They gave him the Michael Jackson drug, the propofol. Oh, I only got Demerol. Oh, Jesus, really? He Just comes a out. Lot. He goes, I think I saw it. I'm like, you, you think you saw it? He goes, yeah, there was a camera. And I'm like, oh, well, that's interesting. He never mentioned it again. Like he when he like really shook it off, he doesn't remember anything. But he kept repeating himself on the car. And at, at some point, I finally started rolling my eyes. <laughs> Well, I, I actually had full blown conversations with people that day. And then the next morning, I think it was my sister in law, she called to check up on me. And so I started explaining things. So she's like, We she's like, honey, we talked about that yesterday. I'm like, We did? Oh yeah. And she's like, Yeah, don't you remember? I'm like, I don't I'm like, I don't remember talking to you. Yeah, <laughs> so. he he must have told me more than six times about the doctor playing the eurythmics before he fell asleep. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm glad he has a great sense of humor. He goes, you're going to really like him. I'm like, good, good. Can't wait. Can't wait. It'll be great. I only remember great. them pulling the camera out at the very end. And I'm like, ouch. Uh, ooh, <laughs> so, I hope I don't hear that. God, my butt is puckering. I mean, it's all slimy and everything. It's not like, you know, they're <laughs> plucking it out like a tampon, dry right. tampon or anything like <laughs> Some, that. One of and Gerald's- it's all, you know, wire, not wires, but it's all like, you know. It's like a snake. Like a plumbing well, snake. I mean, it's just black plasticky yeah. stuff, you know, like tubing and things. I don't want to so. remember anything. I, I I know that like I just remember said, the sensation of it coming out of my butthole, and I was like, ah, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> excuse me. Would be funny if you that you usually felt it's that a flaccid <laughs> penis, but go ahead. If you felt that, you'd be like, I don't do that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that would be awesome. No, that one of Daryl's friends said, "Hey, when you go in there, just say, hey, 'Hey, I've been looking forward to this.' <laughs> just say something right. really inappropriate." And I'm like, well, like they haven't heard it all before. I know. I know. But and he said again for the 10th time yesterday, he said he should have been like, can we take a selfie first? (laughs) (laughs) He said the doctor, the doctor said that if I could give trophies for for clean uh, cleansing, that I would have gotten one. And I said, well, that's that's great, honey. I'm so happy. I'm so happy for you. Everybody loves a participation. Everyone loves a clean colon. (laughs) So So did he have any like polyps or he had one little one, one Uh little one. But 
is you know they're, they they because they he said please call my wife and tell her everything because I won't remember and they're like well of course and so they called me he's like yeah he had one but most people do and you know and I go well, are you gonna biopsy it he goes well I mean we might but it, there's really nothing to it and I'm like okay. well they send so, everything that they they, they usually do yeah. grabs and they like, just they, throw they it on a slide. Do like these, they do all these like little like they, they kind of just drag it like yeah. they're dragging something on the bottom of the sea. Yes. My doctor went to the liberty of taking a picture of a seed that she found before oh, she collected nice. it. And I'm like, Excellent. oh, that's nice. It looks like a giant chunk of corn in my crap. <laughs> and so I mean, it was everything was pink inside. But Ew. there was this giant. I'm like, what the hell is that? And, and Allison, because Allison had taken me. She's like, oh, she said she found a seed. And I'm like, oh, fantastic. Oh, Let's just what? take a giant photo of this giant seed in my this colon. Is, <laughs> this is your seed. Seed. <laughs> it looked like a giant corn kernel Ew. in my tubes. And I was just like, Gross. I'm like, you know, doctors get off on that shit. They're like, well, what is this? Huh, oh, they, they must love seed. it. Oh, my God. Yeah, that kind of makes me want to throw up a little bit. <laughs> like, don't show it to me. I don't want to see it. It's just like, it's well, just like, just when like they give you the mirror. They like, do you want to see your baby? Anymore? I'm, like, was he I'm like, like, no. I'm like, well, how did he stick around? I'm like, was he like implanted? Was it going to grow? What was it? Like a oh, strawberry God. seed? Was it, was it the, I think she it, said it was like a little strawberry seed or something. It's like, like is that. it like the old wives tale when you swallow gum and something grows? <laughs> like, what is this? Well, and then when you get the report, it's all these like, you know, technical terms, but all of them sound so aggressive. And I'm like, oh, my God, this sounds bad. (laughs) And then you start looking them up and it just means like, you know, there was nothing there. No. (laughs) No. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. Okay. Anyway, that's enough of that. It was way too much dental and I was sick of it. No more holes until my awkward moment. Jesus, seriously. But you enjoyed (laughs) an adventure in a hole. Over the holiday, the Halloween holiday, you went to Glory Hole. Where the hell is Glory Hole? What is okay, it? So we didn't actually go to Glory Hole. Oh. So we found this little place. We looked at the, we found the counties that are gold. Because if you look at a COVID map in California, they have um, counties colored by like maximum threat to minimum threat. And minimum threat is basically they're completely open and and operating so there's really like no threat at all they haven't had any you know sicknesses or deaths that they're either on the decline or they haven't had any right but anyway so we went to one of those and it had it's basically where yosemite is but we didn't go to yosemite we were outside of yosemite we were by a little town called columbia okay i don't know if you know where that is no it's like an old it's like a little old gold town and they actually shut off the town and so you just walk around and you look at it's kind of like an old downtown sacramento yeah and the people were super nice there was an old man there uh he was like (laughs) probably like six foot two and he weighed like probably 150 pounds he had like a denim shirt denim pants cowboy boots long silver hair and he wore a cowboy hat and he's like well Welcome, y'all. <laughs> and he's just like had this super long draw. That's cute. And so we just hung out there and, you know, the kids run around and stuff. And this old man, you know, we would go out and then every now and then he would just show up randomly. Like, it seemed like, like you know, watching you. Well, he was just kind of wandering around. Does he it's live a, there? It's, well, it was a smaller place. And so I, I assumed he was like the owner or like a groundskeeper or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And so then we got something to go at one of the like, little general stores, ate dinner in our room, and then the fire pit was going. So we decided to go out there and we sat around. The kids hijacked my phone and did like a full modeling shoot for like, Aww. you know, I have I have like a thousand pictures. Oh, on my, my God. Oh, my God. I have so many. And I'm just like, I can't even get through all of these. But, so like I said, throughout the day, we would just go out and Livia wanted to take pictures of the sunset and the, you know, the flowers and all sure. that stuff. And so... This guy came out every now and then. He's like, so how y'all doing? Can I get you anything? How's the room? You know, blah, blah, blah. We're like, oh, it's great. You know, everything's fine. So we all go to sleep. Next morning we wake up and we decided to go to that little town, Columbia. And there's a candy store. They have like a blacksmith. They have a leather shop, you know, just like a little novelty shops. So it was getting a little late in the day anyway. And I'm like, you know what? We got to get back. I'm like, you've got Victor had to work tomorrow. The kids had school. You know, it was going to take us like two hours to get home. So I'm just like, you know, I'm ready. I, I'm ready to go. I'm tired. Sure. So anyways, before we left the hotel, though, Olivia and I went in to check out and settle the bill because I guess the night before their machine was down or something like that. So I was in there and the guy came out, the taller, older gentleman. And I'm like, oh, I said, well, we're just ready to check out and send all our bill. And he's like, oh, OK. He says, um, well, let me get something for you. And I'm like, oh, OK. 
And I just thought that was a little weird. And I said, oh, I, I said, so are you just like a groundskeeper or do you, are you the owner or something? He's like, oh, I don't, you know, he's like, I don't know how to do computers or anything. He's like, no, actually, I'm just passing through. What? And I'm like, I'm like, oh. And, so the old uh, man, that the, the older gentleman that's been talking to you doesn't even work there? And the one that seems to pop up every time I'm <gasps> out. And in fact, because like I said, Olivia and I were just sitting in the little like checkout area. They had like chairs. And so we were sitting there waiting. We were in there by ourselves. Um, a guy sh- came in because I think they must have a camera in there or a sensor mm-hmm. or something to let them know when someone's in there. He came in and he's just like, he's like, you know what? I'm just the maintenance worker. Mm-hmm. He says, let me go get the guy that actually runs the register or runs the, the counter. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay. And so he went off to go get the guy. And then like within a minute or two, the old man walks in and, um, (laughs) and so he's just like, do you need a, do you guys want a soda or a coffee or water or anything like that? I'm like, no, 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 we're good. So we go outside to leave and then he comes outside and he's, you know, saying goodbye or whatever, because we're packed up the truck. And so Victor's just like, you got a pretty good draw there. He's like, um, you're not from around here. And he's like, no. He's like, where are you from? And he's like, oh, a little bit of everywhere. Paula. He's like, so you're working here now? And I, I said, yeah. I'm like, are you, I said, I assumed you were the owner or something. He's like, no, I'm just passing through. I would and have I been just, like, um, I, as we, soon as he said that, I was just like, me. Like, oh my God. It's the like back your, of my neck went up. It's literally like your own true crime story. That's exactly what I was thinking. And so, Holy shit. And so I'm just like, I'm like, what do you mean passing through? And so he's like, oh, he's like, I got a little bit of cattle over in a ranch not too far from here. And so he's like, I've just been staying with some friends for the last couple months. And then why the hell is he talking to you? And I'm like, oh, OK. And then so Victor's like, so are you, you, where are you originally from? He's why like, are you oh. having a conversation with a serial killer? Well, I think Victor's trying to figure out, like, what trying to see, you like, what's here? your deal? Because he Victor did not like him from the gate why didn't you how come you didn't have any radar because i'm oblivious i'm an idiot jamie i don't have a sense of people i mean you saw what i posted earlier i'm like i don't know when people are flirting with me i know i just assume everyone's nice you have to have some kind of a semblance of danger you think i would right yes and so well here's the thing though i i would have if i hadn't real if i had actually thought he didn't work there, but yes. he, I just assumed he owned the place. Oh my God. The way okay. he behaved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, I bet you he's a fucking serial killer Paula. and he's just traveled from state to state. And I'm like, Killing I bet you people. he has, I said, I bet you he's got an affection for blonde hairs with big tits. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, so after he left, he's like, all right, he's like, well, y'all have a good day. And we're like, all right, bye. I looked at Victor. I'm like, let's get the fuck out of here <laughs> and if you see anyone tailing us in some beat up piece of shit you floor it <laughs> actually the night before i told victor i'm like that guy's weird and i said okay. it just seems like every time we go out i'm like he appears oh, and i'm like oh my god i'm like victor i'm like what if there's cameras in the rooms and olivia's like i don't like it here let's leave and i'm Aww. like olivia stop it so olivia's got some kind of clue and so uh well cause she sees me watching all those crime shows and victor's like i've i've looked out the place he's like paul there's nothing here he says they, they the showers barely work. He's like, there's there's no cameras. <laughs> you know, and maybe so, you guys should reconsider this quaint hobby of going to piece of shit motels on the road. Well, th- it wasn't a piece of shit though. It had excellent reviews. That was the well, thing is everyone's saying how cute and quaint it was, and I'm it was sure super it clean and everything. We have like our that. own serial killer in everything. It, well, <laughs> <laughs> no one mentioned the old man, and then I said, "Oh my God, Victor, I'm all, it's Halloween." I'm like, what if he's what a if? ghost? I'm like, what if he's not even there? And what we're just going to talk real? about the old man that was so kind and nice there that, you know, was like, well traveled. Old man? And they're just like, what old man? <laughs> they're like, oh, you mean, oh, you mean Hank? Yeah, he's, he's been yeah. dead. He's, he's Allegedly, a rancher that was killed. he owned the place 200 years ago. But he's, yeah. he's, he's never been, he, but I mean, he died. Yeah, he was a rancher from the 1800s. Yeah. Around Halloween. Other people have said they've seen him before but, too. It's but there so is weird. no one here. I'll be like, ah! But sage but the is. place. Someone buy some sage immediately. <laughs> I'm like, we're never going back. And then I told Victor, I'm like, oh my god, I'm all. Thank God he said he doesn't know how to use a computer. I'm like, our address is in there. So <laughs> God, I don't think he goes so, out yeah. searching. I think he just finds his victims who are dumb enough to go to you know go hiking somewhere along the trail, and then they're never heard from again. I don't know. I, I'm just like, well, I'm like, I'm I'm not going to go look at his cattle or nothing. I don't Let's know. Not. Why. His quote-unquote cattle are probably a bunch of women. 
Before we went out to the fire pit, I'm like, is he out there? <laughs> Victor's like, no, there's nobody out Jesus. there. Jesus. I'm like, if he shows up, I'm like, I'm going back inside. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, oh I'm so tired. Yeah, oh, oh. Well, obviously by then we had a sense about it yeah. because I was just like, he he was just, every time I went outside or we went out, I never went outside by myself, but every it, time we all went outside to like do stuff or look at stuff, like Olivia and I were outside taking pictures of the sunset mm-hmm. and he just like showed up <gasps> and he's just like, oh, he's all, it's real pretty, isn't it? We're like, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, you know what? It Honestly, was Paula, weird. it was weird. When something like that happens to me, I, I turn into such a cunt. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing out here? Is there a problem? I'm not do that. Stephanie would have slit its throat. She would have been like, I'm calling the cops. <laughs> 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 she would have. Oh my God. So horrible. Well, I didn't want to scare Olivia. So, I mean, I was. Hey, you just know what? To be, like, normal. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm. Because, I, I mean. I just was trying to be like, you know, uh, I'd not be like, cool about the situation, but I was just trying to like, not you know, trigger anything, be relaxed and not like, you know, freak anybody out. I'd be like, no, never mind. I don't want to say anything mean. But anyway, um, yeah, well, I'm so glad you survived and that we're not doing a podcast about your unsolved murder because that would have been really a bummer. I haven't had the opportunity because it's been a, a, a bit of a week. I will be looking to see if there's like anyone of his description that is you know, been looking or they're yeah. looking for someone for like serial mil- murders. Cause I'm going to be oh, yeah. like, yeah, you might want to check out the Yellowstone or the, the, uh, not the Yellowstone. <laughs> Over by, the, uh, uh, the Yosemite, Yosemite Valley Lodge by Columbia, because I think yeah. I might know your guy. <laughs> Woo! So. Anyway. All right. Well, what an exciting adventure for you. And this very hot, ho- very on point for Halloween. I must say <laughs> like I for know, real. Right? Yes. You know, that's something well, you'll discuss. Fortunately, for a we were time. able to hide most of this from the children, so they were really yeah. none the wiser about, yeah. you know, all of this weirdness going yes. on. But <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty scary. So let's go to some ugly and awkward moments of the week while we're at it. <laughs> do you have one? <laughs> I do. Oh, God. Please tell. Usually on our little road trips, we play different games. Like, we play this game where we'll do the ABC game, but we do a music version because we have, like, iHeartRadio or Victor has Sirius or SMS or whatever it's called. I don't know. Mm -hmm. We have to pick a song that starts with the letter A or B or whatever. And then we also will play... um, They'll find, like, trivia, Mm -hmm. like, the phone. um, Mm -hmm. They'll find, like, a trivia app. And so you do it by category. So... Brian was giving me Olivia and Victor trivia and it was a food category. And so they said, um, hummus is made with this particular bean or something Mm -hmm. like that. And Victor's just like chickpeas. I'm like, or I said, also known as gorgonzola beans. (laughs) (laughs) And Victor looked at me and he's like, what? I'm like, it is. I'm like, look it up. I said, gorgonzola beans. And he's just like, he's like, you mean garbanzo beans? I'm like, I'm like, what did I say? He's all gorgonzola, gorgonzola. beans. I'm like, and I'm like, why is that wrong? And he's like, gorgonzola. I'm like, gorgonzola. I'm like, oh, as in the cheese. I'm like, I got it. And for the rest of the day, I still kept saying, I'm all gorgonzola oh, beans. I'm like, why that. can't I get that out of my mind? I'm I like, there that. are no gorgonzola beans. That's funny. Well, I don't know. I, I hate it. I do things like that. I say things that are so dumb. I know. And I keep saying, and I believe them as gospel. It's, well, it's like, truth. I say it with a serious face. I'm, I'm like, like, no, I am beans. serious. I'm like, it's a gorgonzola bean, Victor. I'm like, yes, chickpeas. I'm like, they make them with falafels too. And I was like, <laughs> continuing to argue my point. You were serious. Like, because I literally believed it was a gorgonzola bean. And I'm like, no, I'm like, they make them for falafels too. I'm going to look it up. And he's just, he's just sitting there staring at me like, Oh my God, Paul, like, please stop arguing your point. Actually, like, I know you mean garbanzo beans, but you keep saying <laughs> gorgonzola beans. <laughs> okay, so you know we get this from our mom, right? <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, are you I kidding? wish I didn't get it from anywhere because I feel like such a, a shoe when I'm she, done. For as long as I can remember, it, it's almost like she knows that it's somewhere along the lines of what she's saying. And she's like, no, this is just what it is now. For example... <laughs> Trader Joe's is Trader Jips, and she was dead as a heart attack when she said it. She goes, no, I'm going to Trader Jips. I'm like, excuse me, what's that? You know, the Jips, Trader Jips. And I'm like, mom, it's Trader Joe's. She's like, oh, no. It, Whatever, yeah. you know what I meant. Yeah, you know what I meant. <laughs> or like <laughs> one time, I, I believe it was you or Stephanie and someone said, 
to her, oh, we should just go to Long's, which is a drugstore here, which doesn't <laughs> exist anymore, but back in the day oh, it did. That was before, was it before it was Thrifties or was that after Thrifties? It was after. Or was well, it completely separate from Thrifties? Separate. Uh, uh, okay, Long's yeah. was, a, was a very local drug, basic drugstore. And yes. somebody goes, that oh. Was, that was a hearing problem. That was me. <laughs> okay. And she's like, Hans? <laughs> she's, I'm like, Long's. She's like, Hans? And I'm like, no, Long's. Hans? My mom, Long's. Like the drugstore, Long's. She's like, oh, I thought you said Hans. I'm like, what's Hans? <laughs> she was Pam. laughing so hard i think she had to pull over <laughs> which is <laughs> we were driving in like a neighborhood god she was her face was bright red <laughs> and i think she was laughing because she started to think about it she's like there's no such place as Hans. i know I'm like i don't even know what Hans is what's a Han? i'm like I how know. would you even spell like h-a-u-n-s or i thought it was eight like Han, like, like goldie someone's Hans last name or... goldie Han, yeah hans but <sighs> I, I do things like that all the time yeah it happens like all the i time. just i and i it's like in my brain i'm like that's like <laughs> the other day we were talking about uh dang it i can't even think of it now the the the, the states that are like hot grounds or <laughs> what are they called Wait, what? Battlegrounds. Battleground states. Battlegrounds. I, I was like, I'm all the battle states, you know, the battle states. <laughs> he's like, the battlegrounds? I'm like, yeah. Well, just I like the other day, the other day when we were talking about local elections, I said, you know, the water board. <laughs> <laughs> or why I said we lived off of Watergate. Exactly. <laughs> I had yeah, watched we did a like all documentary. Yeah. I couldn't think of what. Now I can't even think of it. What, what street do I live on? What? Not Watergate. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like my brain can only hold so much information. Yeah, and, and this, this, in the world in which we live in, we are running out of room. But I, I told to Victor, I'm like, I don't know why I we don't have our own reality show because I know. Like I, I'm kid, I'm not kidding you. Like I was so definitive. You're like, about I'm serious. Like it wasn't even a question about it being a a, a garbanz. No, it's not now. Gorgonzola beans. Gorgonzola like that beans. was that wasn't even the issue. It yeah. was just that, that, that it was you like were no. Resolute. <laughs> I said yes. They can be called chickpeas, but they also can be known as gorgonzola beans. And by the way, I just oh go ahead finish. I said so. I just want you to know that there is a, another name for them. I said and in addition to that, they can also be used in falafels. <laughs> and so it's like whether it was a gorgonzola bean or not, or a garbanz. Yeah, no. Wait, <laughs> whatever yes whatever the name was i'm like that wasn't even in question no i was just trying to point out yes. hummus and falafels are made with the same bean gorgonzola beans well your daughter has it too because the other <laughs> night you guys were playing that trivia game and you said something that starts with an a and she said math well okay so the question Darren was I, go the ahead. question was a four letter word okay and so i uh, forgot to, which i failed to write on there which i was yeah. mad because i was just like what i was rereading it and i'm like why, why, why was I just putting the words? I'm like, oh, I forgot to put a four letter word. And I'm like, God, yeah. I'm the idiot. Yeah, because, because <laughs> Daryl was like, well, she probably meant arithmetic. And I said, yeah, she's smarter than them all. But now but it's a it was a four letter word. word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got it. If I asked her what arithmetic was, she would not know what well, that you is. You don't know her life. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. Here's my awkward moment. So as I said, uh, Daryl and I had our annual physicals. And we have a doctor. We have the same doctor. And um, Dr. So, Han. Dr. Fong. Han. Oh, Fong. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Han. <laughs> no, it's not Hans. That's Long's. Now, Dr. Fong used to be uh, specialized in women's reproductive. So he used to be like a gynecologist. And then he decided to go to GP, general practitioner. Mm -hmm. So he can actually do the whole female thing. And yeah. I actually don't mind it because I don't have any major problems. So it's like if I ever had anything beyond the basics, I would definitely go to a, an actual gynecologist. But because he used to be one, I'm cool with him just doing the thing. And so it's a nice bonus, actually. So anyway... <laughs> I'm sitting there and I'm nervous because I'm afraid to have the weight gain talk because I have so much anxiety about it. And so I'm sitting there and I'm waiting. Well, I mean, if if you think it's going to happen, why would you be anxious about it? Because I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear. I don't. I just don't like. I don't know. It's just it's an anxiety issue. I've had well, since I was like 15. Well, is he a thin person? Well, he's a very small Asian man. Yes. 
But I'd be like, you know what? Fuck you. It's genetics. <laughs> he doesn't say anything. He He's honest. Like, when I first started going to him, he's like, look, you got to lose like 20 pounds. And I said, OK. So I did. I, I lost. I've lost about. Like, yeah. And you know what? You need to age like 20 years younger. <laughs> so I did. Die. And my cholesterol went down. My blood pressure went I mean, everything improved when I lost So that why don't you do what I used to do with my psychiatrist? I used to get anxiety mm-hmm. when he would say, well, we have to stop. So I would look at the clock and then I would say, well, I think we have to stop. So oh. I would end the the session <laughs> okay. before he could because it made me uncomfortable because I don't like being cut off. And oh, so, I see. Because I, I hate being like mid right. like emotional thought and then he'd be like, we have to stop. So I would watch the and be like, well, it. we have to stop. So you That's could just nice. say, well, doctor, I'm concerned about my weight. Right. So you could say that. I'm not. Okay. And kind of like deflate his balloon. Right. Well, the thing is, is it's not. I make it far worse in my brain than it actually is. So he comes in. Now, I definitely what do you think he's going to do walk in with a scale and, you know, <laughs> make you strip down to your underwear and hold up a towel and be like, all right, get on. So I, you do have to the get media. Is, <laughs> no, they weigh you before. But he comes in. We go through the whole like, have you been this year? Blah, blah, blah. And then he said, well, it looks like you're up a couple I've pounds. I've been a naughty girl. Yeah, exactly. He goes, well, it looks like you're up like a couple pounds. And I said, yeah, I said, actually, I had actually put on quite a bit of weight over the summer and I've lost most of it. So I'm more on the decline than it it may appear to you, but I am. He goes, well, it's okay. He's like, let's just keep working on it. And that's it. That's all it is. Well, the problem was I was so anxious about that part of it that I had to pee. And so I'm sitting there and he goes, all right, well, today we're doing your pelvic and a pap smear and all that stuff. And I said, okay, fine. I'm laying there going, oh my God, I have to pee so bad. And See, so, I always but I, get gassy right before there because I'm nervous. So I'm always like afraid right? I'm going to toot in their face. No. And so I'm, he goes, OK. So I'm sitting there. So the, the Russian nurse comes in, the one that gave me my shot. She stabbed me with her saber. It gave me my shot. She comes in and I turn to her and I'm like, I have to pee so bad. And she's, she looks at me. She goes, oh, no. <laughs> and I was like, I've never had a pelvic with a full bladder before. And so I'm laying there. He goes, he, I, I could not open my legs because I, I was afraid I was going to pee on him. And so well, I mean, he lit- if you, if you, a gust of cold air hits, you mean, just a <laughs> little over. squirt. So he literally Wait, pulled- Wait, odor? No, 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 no. I did What'd not- you just say? I said, I said, um, I don't know. What did okay, I say? not odor. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So anyway, he- I won't open as wide as he needs to to put the duck lips in. And so he literally pushes the stirrup like over to make my leg forcibly move. I'm surprised he didn't be like, scoot down further, further. Which I where basically down. your butt is hanging off the edge. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, you feel like, you know, you're going to fall off. I, I don't know. I'm like, you know, if you need your butt down there that far, like, like put a stop sign. Just say stop when your butt gets here. Yeah. When you feel That's this, what I would do if I was feel an this cold sign, stop. Um, just just have like a, a butt stop. So like he puts when it your in. your cheeks reach here, stop. Puts the thing in and then he goes, okay, I'm going to fill your cervix. And he puts his hand on top of my <laughs> bladder and then has his hand. I was like, I'm like, Ooh! and he's like, what, everything okay? And I'm like, I'm just trying not to pee on you. And he's like, um, all right. He's like, anyway, does this hurt? And I'm like, well, no, not really. <laughs> and so I'm like, how do I get out of this? And the nurse is laughing. She's laughing. How did you not, Jamie, you know me. I mean, if I sneeze or burst in laughter, <laughs> something comes out. I know. Usually I'm like, ah, oh. And all I had in my brain like, the, the whole time, the only thing I could think of was, this is like a bad movie where a stream of urine is going to come flinging out of this thing. And <laughs> you're like the sheet. woman that gives birth and squirts diarrhea. Yes, all over. Okay, I'm I don't so, know how that happened. I don't That's either. Stupid. That is stupid. But um, <laughs> anyway, I was like, and finally, and then I'm like, okay, I survived it. He slowly took out the duck lips. He goes, okay, now really quick. And he shoved his fingers up my asshole. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. And I was like, I'm like nothing. So anyway, I don't know how I did it, but I got out of I there either god you must have a really good core kegels bitch (laughs) in fact when i he goes let me help you he was gonna help me sit up and i sat up on my own he goes oh nice i'm like i've been working on my core he goes good for you (laughs) i'm like i got it (laughs) (laughs) i told you i've been working so anyway it was really embarrassing god you are lucky i would have pissed all over his face i really like put on the goggles it's gonna first six rows is the wet zone And then they have in my <laughs> tissues. God. God. It's they give you like three. As soon as I leave the room, I like grab the box. I'm like, <laughs> you know what 
get, I do like, okay. five more. I know they, like they squirt that shit all over you. I know. I know that this is probably this is my own personal thing and it's I'm very weird about it. But and I've been doing this since day one, even when I had before, when I was pregnant and going to another doctor. Uh, when they give you the two tissues and then they leave so you can get dressed and stuff. So I clean up, I get dressed, and then I take the the the, the stuff that I was laying on. If there's like a wet spot from the KY, I pull it off and throw it away. I always clean up my own mess. I do. like, And I, I like pull the sheet down, I tear it off, and I'm like, all right. So oh, so you do it clean. too? I clean up everything. I do too. I want like no remnants of my... Maybe it's just because I'm so used to being the mistress. I clean up after myself. I do not want any trace of my existence in that room. I'm like, all right, so, I'll spray the alcohol. I'm like, hey, I don't smell any of myself. I nope. don't see any of myself. I'm no, like, no hairs. There's all right, no I'm pheromones. Good. No, no nothing. lipstick. No nothing. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I, am, I am very fastidious. Done and done. And then I what come texture. in and they always look around like, oh, did someone clean in here? Yeah, has somebody already been here? No. I, I did no she sanitize what you're talking about? Yeah, and I as far as you know, I wasn't either. <laughs> no, That's right. Uh, I was nothing. I'm a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny because like they hand you the t-shirt. I'm like, don't you have anything larger, like a men's t-shirt or something? I'm it's kind of what I'm used to. <laughs> oh, when Daryl when Daryl had to do the colonoscopy, I bought him dude wipes, and they're basically they're baby wipes for adults, but they're like the size of a washcloth. They're not those dumb little dainty baby wipes. They're like big ass wipes. Well, and apparently, but yeah, Daryl doesn't have a big ass. He doesn't. But I mean, for adults, man. And so I bought him and I'm like, I think you'll like these. And then I told him I bought him some desitin because it says that <laughs> if you aren't, if you've never done cleanse or whatever, put some desitin on your butt hole. And then when it starts, you'll have like a little bit of a, a border, you know, like a kind of like a wall of a barrier, a barrier to keep your butt from getting raw because it's a barrier cream, <laughs> a barrier cream. <laughs> And so, so you got him dude wipes. I got like him dude big wipes. Big ass dude wipes and baby butt cream. And desitin. And well, so, that's not a mixed message. <laughs> I know, right? <clears throat> so I said. Did he use either of those? He used the dude wipes for sure. Because toilet paper makes your butt raw. It's so harsh if you're wiping all the time. And so I told him. I said, now use the desitin first and then, you know, whatever. So he didn't, of course. And then he goes, well, I finally started getting a little raw. So I put some of that on. He goes, that shit burns. I'm like, you're supposed to put it on first. You're not supposed to put it on after. It's you too late. Vaseline. I mean, same yes. Effect. Anyway. Vaseline it, doesn't burn. No, it does not. So anyway, I was just, yes, dude wipes. And so. Actually, I read uh, an article the other day. It says like 15 uses for Vaseline or something like that. You yeah. can use that stuff for a lot of stuff. You know, it's not just it's, for your peaches. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, before we say goodbye, really quick, uh, I mentioned it to you a little bit in our chat, and at first I wasn't sure I was going to say it, but I, I really have to because we have kind wait, of this... wait, wait, wait. It's not about any of the pictures we saw, right? What pictures? <laughs> okay, never mind. No, uh, the the picture Stephanie said. <laughs> no, no, or the no, gif no. or the video or whatever. No, it was. no, none of that. Because I'm like, please don't talk about that. I want people to know what we do. <laughs> I'm not. Um, no, that's for us. That's for us. Okay, that's private okay, time. Okay. <clears throat> that's private time. That's for us. Um, that's so, <laughs> so, no. I was telling you, I briefly told you, but I wanted to talk about it because I. Th- okay, please use the proper term, though, this time. All right. <laughs> So we've been ordering a lot of DoorDash. Cut that part out. Cut that part because I don't want people to think you're using an appropriate (laughs) term when you were talking about it. You can say that word. It's not a bad word. Um, So this is what if you watched the video that I sent you about things not to say. Say I didn't. didn't The M word is one of them. I'm not going to say it. Hold on. So the other day, Paul, Stephanie, I think you're in the conversation. <laughs> the three of us were chatting and Stephanie said, I have never seen a dwarf in real life before. Wait, and a dwarf? A dwarf. Yeah. And I said, really? And she goes, no, I, I kind of want to. And I said, Isn't well, that like a mythical creature. <laughs> I don't know. And so I said, oh, I said, I'm pretty sure I have. But I but I just can't remember, you know, because it's not. I, I, it's not like I'm going, oh, my God. You know, it was just like, yeah, I think I have, but I don't know. And she's like, yeah, I have. And I kind of want to. And I said, OK. So <laughs> like literally two days later, we had ordered DoorDash and our driver got lost. And it's not uncommon. It happens all the time. I thought you we're- were going to say DoorDash. <laughs> what? I thought you were going to say DoorDash. <laughs> You're making me mutley laugh. So, <laughs> so it Dar- sounded like dwarf and I was like, "What did you say?" Hold on. I wonder what kind of <laughs> that would be. We're, we're literally the worst people.
people on the planet right now. I swear to God. Daryl no. better cut all of this out. No. All right. <clears throat> oh, God. We'll cut Sorry. that out. <laughs> Jeez. So anyway, the DoorDash guy is lost. And it's been like 15 minutes. And he's like, oh, man, he's just sitting in the wrong place. And he's kind of, you know, where is he? And so Daryl's calling him. And they're texting each other. And finally he figures it out. And he's like, there's a court. We're in this big roundabout. And then we're in one of the offshoots of the roundabout. And he can't figure out which offshoot to get in to deliver our food. And so Daryl goes, I'm going out there. So he goes out. He goes, I'm just going to flag him down. Because I know he's literally just driving around in the circles. And so he goes out (laughs) there. He flags him down. The guy gives him the food. Incredibly apologetic because it's cold. And Daryl's like, you know, he goes, I'm not going to be mad at him. I know how frustrating it is. You know, he's. and I said, I go, hey, I go, he's driving. He's delivering food for DoorDash, it's like 8 o'clock at night. Give the guy a break. You know, it's like nobody wants to do that job. They have to do that usually. They have to do it to make ends meet. It's fine. He goes, yeah, you're right. And so he goes and he goes, I'm going to go get it. Those are awfully nice. I'd be like, you have one job. (laughs) I know. So he might have 10 jobs for all I know. So, well, you... I don't know assumptions I'm like well you have one job right now and you're doing it poorly yes <laughs> Daryl was mad and so you you and I see things far differently you I know so much I, know. The day. I just like, think about 10 jobs I'm like well not right now he's got one and <laughs> he's got doing one it and badly and my food's gonna be cold and I'm pissed and right. I already gave him a tip so yeah you're I'm mad tipped. right <laughs> so he comes in and he's like I, I I wish you had come out there with me but I'm kind of glad you didn't and I said <laughs> what like, Oh my god, why? He said it well, our driver was a dwarf. And I no, said a little person. He it's dwarf. I know it. I it's, it's not, it's a little person. It is. Are you sure? Jamie, because I've heard I've heard little people say dwarf. So I don't know. No, they have dwarfism. Okay. All right, little person. And and Daryl okay, is the a kindest dwarf. man. In folk for folk for or fantasy literature, Folklore. a member of a mythical race okay. of short, stocky, human-like creatures who are generally skilled in mining or metalworking. Okay, that is what a dwarf is. Or right, is he a small person. mythical creature? Obviously <laughs> well. not in metalworking because he delivered food. <laughs> I don't know what you call a small, a little person who delivers food. A little person, then. A little person yes. who does DoorDash. He has not reached dwarf status yet. Okay. Maybe maybe that was his day job. Maybe. I don't know. So, well, of course, he's not Stephanie, a dwarf. He's a little person. Stephanie, I told you he's that. a little, he's a, he's a folklore. But anyway, <laughs> so I said, oh my God. And, and I was he started, said, did he call Daryl Lord? <laughs> Oh, my no. Lord, I'm so sorry. <laughs> sir, can you show food, sir? Sir, please, no. sir, have pity on me. <laughs> so anyway, he goes, he's like, I, I, like, I wish you did, but I'm glad you didn't, because I would have made it incredibly uncomfortable, probably immediately. Because knowing me, he would have gotten out. I've whittled you these utensils. He would have come out, and I would have been like, oh, hello. <laughs> you know, something really awful I and uncomfortable. I want to say, like, someone's different i'm like well hello sir i always want to say sir i don't know why <laughs> hello I just small feel like it's polite i don't know it's like hello young gentleman no i never want to say young or anything because i just don't want to i'm just like well sir hello <laughs> yeah and, and sir according to daryl he was incredibly small he was not an <laughs> like for even for a little person he was very small first of all i am not making fun of someone who is small a small person that's not what this is what what i'm saying is the laughter comes from my inability to be normal around someone who you don't the, the, someone different. who has yeah, i get it yeah so and and here's why i brought it up because we got in a lot of trouble with a certain community a few years ago because they thought we were making fun of them and they called us twats but we weren't actually we were like irritated that this fucking little carnival channel was exploiting them and they were we felt it was exploited it was i felt we felt it was like short of midget wrestling it really felt like that Okay, really quick before we close the show, there is a new merchandise item on Ugly Truth's merchandise page, and you can just go to UglyTruth.com, our website, and there's a tab that says merch, and you can just go there and then click through to our store. It is the new official Lip and Clip accessories bag. Yay. Because if you're gonna get if you're gonna do lip and clip, you need to have your things in the bag. So you know, scrunchies or a beanie, lip gloss, mascara, whatever you consider your lip and clip. 
now there's a bag for it and it's really cute and i'm gonna buy you and stephanie one because you guys will love it it's so cute it's like a makeup Aww. bag but you can use it for anything but it's really cute that sounds cute i'm i'm excited yeah real cute stuff perfect 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 all right well i think that's all for today we will see everybody next sunday until then happy veterans day to our veterans we appreciate you and all that you do um that's coming up so if you know a vet uh be sure to say thank you veterans day is wednesday november 11th and um until then we'll see you next time Bye. bye